Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So this one's been asked for for quite a while. I'm gonna be talking about Copics, Tombos and Crayola Super Tips. So if you wanna hear a little bit about all of these kinds of markers, then just keep watching. All right, so as most of you who have been around for a little while know, I have been collecting markers for longer than I care to remember. Uh, started out with the Tombos and then I got some Crayolas and recently I've moved over to Copics. Now there's different reasons that I like each of them, but I do like them all. Uh, and I'm gonna show you a little bit, or tell, show and tell you a little bit about all of them today. So I started off, and I'll give you positive and negatives on all of them as well. So I started with the Tombos. I, I have all 108 colors, yes, that is ridiculous. And I collected them in a very wrong way. I collected them one by one. If I'm going to give the best advice, if you wanna get Tombos, Buy them all in one hit because that way you actually save money by buying them in bulk. You can buy Tombos from Officeworks or from Eckersley's, uh, but you can also buy them online. Obviously, there's lots of places that you can get them as well. So we'll start off with, I guess, a little bit of what the pen looks like or what the marker looks like, sorry. So it's got two ends. Everything except the Crayolas I'm going to show you today have two different ends. So one is a brush end and I'm just going to grab in a notebook so that I can sort of show you this a little bit better. So it's got a brush tip end at one end and it's got a fine point at the other. The brush tip is great for brush lettering, which I'm still not very good at, but there we go. So it's a really great color, um, great marker for that. It is also really good for coloring um, and it has obviously a wide range of colors with 108 of them. Uh, it does blend really nicely as well. So this is the fine tip end just so you can sort of see what it looks like. I will admit I don't use the fine tip anywhere near as much as I should. They do blend, you can do that. So I've got 403 and 443 here, they are kind of similar. So if I just put that down and then put this down. They do kind of blend together. They're a little hard to do, I will admit. Yeah, getting shading and stuff like that is a little difficult because you do get pilling of the paper. But the other thing that you can do, which works really nicely, which also does work with the Copic. So you take your lighter color and hold the tip of that to your darker color. And this does work with opposite markers as well. I just sort of either hold it or brush it either way. And you can sort of see you get a bit of a, it's very faint because I didn't hold it long enough. Um, but you do get a little bit of a transfer of the color which you then can blend together. Now the thing, with Tombos is that they are water-based, which means they are very, 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 very easily to use with water coloring or water brush pens. So I'm just gonna grab it in. This is just a palette that I use. It's actually a stamp block, but you can use it as a palette. And I just sort of put a bit of ink on here, grab my water brush pen, any water brush pen will do. I think this one's actually got color, no it doesn't, but I had color on it. You can see already I've made a bit of a soupy mess there, which is kind of easy to use and then you can get some really nice results with the water coloring. Sort of with that, and if you wanted to bring in that darker one. These are very quick examples, obviously, so you can obviously do a lot more than with this than what I'm showing you, but you can get some really cool effects um, with using these with water and using a brush pen, and you can get these from basically anywhere. There is also a colorless blender that comes in this that you can use to pick up um, either some of this, so just to sort of show you what I mean with that. It does sort of wipe the colour away, so even though that's now got a little bit of blue to it, it will just blend to nothing. Same thing here. So if you do want that faded effect, there are ways to do it with the Tombos, and that actually looks really cool. Um, I like the Tombos for, for water colouring more than anything else. I do find that sometimes the pigment in here isn't as good as I would like. Uh, which is why I do also whoops, have watercolour paints as well. Um, they are reasonably inexpensive. They're sort of $6.50-ish a pen, depending on where you get them from. Uh, you can obviously get them cheaper than that. And like I said at the beginning, if you do buy them not in, like not separately or in bulk, you can get them for, like, if you buy them from Officeworks, you can get them for $5.50 if you buy them more than five at a time. So there are ways to buy them that aren't quite so expensive. Now some drawbacks to the Tombos, they are, they do pill, so if you put sort of like a lot there and then you want to go over and add some darker ones, like add some darker here and then try and blend it together, 
it is going to peel really badly the more you add. And I'm just trying to get that to do it so you can see. There you go. So it's starting to peel that up. It does blend, but you are pulling pulling up a lot of the paper, which I find kind of counterintuitive. And you can't replace anything in here. So the, the nibs, once you've wasted, well not wasted them, once you've gone through them, uh, they aren't replaceable in any way, shape or form. And the same thing with the ink. If you run out, you have to buy a whole new marker. The Copics are different in that, that you can fill them up. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So this is, um, it's not watercolor paper, but it's, it's fairly thick paper. This is out of a Kmart kind of notebook. It's kind of like art paper that you get out of a sketch pad. Um, no bleed through at all through that, which is really good just to sort of give you that. It will bleed through your planner pages though. So if you are going to use them in your planner, just be aware that when you, especially when you add water to them, they are going to bleed through. So just something to be aware of there. So I started with the Tombos because I thought they were going to be what I wanted. What I found out very quickly was that they wouldn't, weren't and what I actually wanted were the alcohol markers because they were the ones that blended really nicely. So like I said, I'll give you a little bit more information about those in just a second. I keep all of my Tombos in these little um, marker caddies. I got these from Officeworks. I'm pretty sure they are actually supposed to be brush holders, but they fit the Copics. I keep saying Copics, I mean Tombos. They keep the Tombos in here really nicely. For whatever reason, I don't mind keeping these ones up vertically. The Copics though, I'm really hell bent on keeping horizontal. Personal preference. As far as I'm aware, most people have said there aren't any long-term differences between either. Tombos, I've never had a problem keeping them up vertically, so that just sort of seems to be a bit easier. Now, if you're looking for watercolor or water-based markers that are a little bit cheaper, you wanna have a play with them, but you're not sure you wanna to commit to obviously $6.50 a pen, um, try the Super Tip. So these are Crayola ones. You can get them in packs of 10 all the way up to 50, and I'm pretty sure from Officeworks, these are sort of sitting at about a price point for 50 of them for $34. Really, really good. A good array of colours too. You've got sort of your greys. Obviously the, the Tombos have lots and lots and lots and lots of colours. Uh, these ones obviously only have 50. I think you can buy a 100 pack, but I don't know if you can get them in Australia. Uh, but you've got your greys, your browns, your pinks, etc, etc. These work in a very similar way to the Tombow in that they are water-based, so they work really well with water. Um, they do have a just one tip on them. They don't have a bottom end, and you can get a wide kind of one or a really fine tip depending on how you hold the pen. They do blend a little bit, not quite as well, I wouldn't say, as the Tombos do. And obviously the colours are a little bit further apart on the spectrum, so there's not really ones that you can look to get close. As you can see here, as I'm blending those together, they do pill very much like the Tombos do. But then also like the Tombos, you can use them with water. So I'll just put some down on this block again. my water so it'll be a little bit soupy blue but that's okay so you can see you get some nice effects with the watercolors by using these ones like I said they're a budget option but if you are interested in playing with markers and giving them a shot and seeing what works and what doesn't these are a really good way to start because honestly if you waste $35 on 50 markers are you really going to be too worried my opinion all oh, this is my opinion so they are the water-based markers that I really enjoy using. I think it's really hard to compare the Tombos to the Crayolas because they are really in a completely different kind of price point family. You can't replace anything in here either. So once, once they're gone, they're gone. But again, for that price, I'm not really too worried about that. I think that's the downfall to me with the Tombos now, like looking back on them. And if I should have started with Copics or started with Tombos, um, I think knowing that none of these are refillable and once I've killed the marker, I've killed the marker, that kind of makes me a little bit sad and I probably should have done a little bit more research into that. But I am I really like having my watercolour water based markers because you can use them for all those things. Uh, just to show you a quick bleed test, bleeds a little bit when I'm putting all that double sort of ink on there, but other than that it actually works out really well. Okay, moving on to the Copics. Obviously, this is my newest obsession. I haven't had them for quite as long. Oh, by the way, sorry. I keep the um, Super Tips in the same storage caddy as I keep my black and grey markers because they don't fit in here. I'm pretty sure that the 
these hold 96 and that's originally how many Tombos they had but they brought out another 12 recently so it's brought it up to 108 colours total. So the, the Tombos sit at the back and I've got my Super Tips that sit at the front. My Copics live in this um, storage caddy that I got from It's a Mega Thing at the moment. I'm thinking about when I move into the new place they might get there a, a different kind of holder but I really do like this and if you want to see a little bit more information on it check out my November favourites because I did show that off a little bit. Uh, so there are four different kinds of Copic markers. I've only got one. These are the sketch markers. Um, the sketch markers come in 358 colours, which is how many colours are total made by Copic. There are three other kinds of markers. There is a classic, which has 214, a chow, which has 180, and a wide, which has 56. The differences between them all come down to um, how much ink they hold, the different nib types, uh, and, and how wide those nibs are. I would really recommend that you check out Dawn Lewis's podcast if you're interested in a little bit more about Copics and all the different sizes and bits and pieces. And if you are investigating a bit further, that podcast was really helpful to me and Dawn was fantastic when I was buying my Copics. So I highly recommend uh, checking that out. The sketch marker has two different kinds of nibs. It has the, um, the chisel nib, which honestly I never use and also has the brush tip nib, which is the one I use the most. So I get really nice results with the, uh, with the brush tip, but the chisel tip you can use to sort of go through big wide areas and stuff. So the difference between the Copic and the Tombow, these are alcohol-based markers, which means that they do blend together really, really, really nicely because it doesn't sort of, you don't get those streaks when you're coloring. So I'll just grab two colors that I know blend together really nicely. So I'm just gonna grab these reds. So I'm just sort of gonna do a bit of a square. Now this paper, it does have a lot to do with which kind of paper you use as well. I don't think this paper is gonna treat me as nicely as my blending card does. I get really nice results on my Express It blending card, which is what I use when I'm stamping and creating cards and things with my Copics. But this might give me what I want. So you see there, that blend is really, really nice. And you can work on that and get that a bit better. You can blend between two colors. You can do that holding tip to tip to try to pick up the alcohol, like pick up the other color and then blend along. You see how that started darker and then went lighter. There's lots of different techniques to use with the Copics that I find really useful. And I'm having a lot of fun just learning how to use these. I have 80 of them right now. That seems excessive, I know, especially when you put into perspective uh, they start from about $9.50. Um, they are all the same price, but they are at different price points at different places. They're very, very similar to my Distress Oxides. I found I can buy them cheaper in some places. Dawn has them starting from $9.50 for most of the markers. I think there are a couple there that might be $9.95, but most of them are $9.50. Or if you really want to grab them from Officeworks, they start at about $10.50, and you can get them for $10 if you buy more than five at once. So there are ways to pick these up. You can also buy them at Eckersley's. Um, and where else have I seen them? I know I've seen them somewhere else. Try it like um, specialty art places. There's this really good one actually near uh, Adelaide Airport uh, at Harbour Town called Art to Art, which had these for $10 if you bought more than five. So they were on par there. I, the things that we need to keep in mind with the Copics are that they are refillable. So if you do run out of ink, and this is a difference too between the sketch markers and the chow markers. The chow markers don't hold as much ink. The, the sketches sort of hold a little bit more which means you can use them for longer before you need to refill them. But any one of them can be refilled and the ink is the same in every single marker. So it doesn't matter if you pick up, if you got like 10 of these and then you bought 10 chows, they are the same colour no matter what sort of design of pen you use. So the ink can be used to refill any of them. The nibs are replaceable if you don't like um, the chisel end, you can buy another nib that can go in the end. Same thing, you can replace any of the nibs if you do use them, which is a really cool feature. Um, they've also got all of the numbers on the end, so they're really easy to find, whereas the Tombos have them on the side. Uh, and and the, the Super Tips don't have them at all, so I wrote them on myself so that I knew what colour they were. All in all, I think it comes down to what kind of... Oh, sorry, bleed. The Copics bleed. The Copics bleed a lot. You can't use them in your planner flat out, just don't even try. Uh, like I said, this is pretty thick and it's gone straight through 
one other extra bit where I did do that really dark blend. If you're just doing the one sip through, you should be okay. But as soon as you start adding sort of other layers on here, they are going to bleed straight through. So just be aware of that. Uh, like I said, they are used for different things. I don't think you can compare them. And I think that was my mistake at the beginning that I tried to compare these. These are apples versus oranges. They are completely different kinds of markers. And as soon as you understand that, you sort of get which what, if, what each of them are for. These are great for water coloring. They are great for a little bit of coloring if you just sort of do want to do really basic stuff. If you want to do anything that has shadows or blends or anything like that, you need to grab the Copics. There are obviously other kinds of alcohol markers on the market. I started off with the Aldi ones and they were brilliant for a good 12 months. I really enjoyed them. The only problem I had with the Aldi markers was that they didn't have a brush tip. They had a really strong kind of um, pencil, not pencil, but pen-like tip, um, which made it really hard to get those nice sort of color blends because you couldn't really blend them together. You sort of had to dig in, which then made the paper pill. Um, but when you did get them to work, they actually were really nice. The alcohol in them is really nice. Um, so if you want to start off with the Aldi markers or something similar, you can get some from Kmart. And I know you can get some from Riot Art and Craft. If you wanted to start with those, that'd be a really good way to sort of introduce yourself before you go jumping into Copics because they are expensive and it is a gigantic collection. And if you're anything like me, you're a completionist and you're going to want all of them, which is what happened with the Tombos. Um, thankfully, I've tricked myself into thinking I have all of the Copics by having them all in one kind of container that's now full. So perhaps I'm okay for a little bit longer. I am really glad that I have both now. It's a really cool way to make sure that I can basically cover myself for any kind of coloring I want to do, but they are used for different things. So like I said, just keep that in mind. If you have any questions about either of them, obviously this is a very kind of short, um, not so detailed review or comparison between the two. There are lots and lots of articles on the internet about Copics V Tombos. Um, also have a good listen to Dawn's podcast. I'll link it down below if you do want any more information on Copics because like I said, I found that really, really, really helpful when I was deciding what I wanted to do. Oh, sorry. Um, one more thing with the with the colors. Actually, no, I'm not going to go into the colors. It's all in Dawn's podcast and it will. It, it, she'll explain it 10 times better than I ever could. Um, but there are a, there is a reason why they're named the net like the the numbers they are and there's a system to that uh, So like I said have a listen and you'll you'll learn very quickly sort of what the numbers mean and why they get numbered the way they do So that is it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy it Like I said, it's one that has been asked for for a fairly long time uh, So thank you so much for being patient while I kind of worked out what I was doing with these This is a very very brief overview of all of them. It's not designed to be um, a, a review or a full in-depth this is all the information you'll ever need it is a bit more of an overview so please take it as such if you have any other questions about Tombos or Crayolas or Copics please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them whenever I can but yeah I just thought this was a really good kind of kind of video to do especially coming up to Christmas if you've got sort of something you're looking for and you're interested in markers maybe this sort of helps guide you before you tell people what you actually want I hope you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to be subscribed to my channel for any future videos using Tombos, Copics or the Super Tips. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic fantastic rest of your day and I will see you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye!